Physics is very concerned with motion. Motion, we've seen, is characterized by velocity. The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Acceleration is determined by net force. So it's very important to us to be able to determine net forces and to understand how forces interact with each other. We've learned about three kinds of forces so far. The force of gravity, the normal force exerted by a surface, and friction, which is also exerted by a surface. In this lesson, we're going to talk more about how forces combine, and we'll also introduce a new force and how to deal with it, which is the force of tension. An important category of physics problems is static problems. Recall that the net force acting on an object is the sum of all forces acting on it. Since force is a vector, this is a vector sum. Statics problems are those in which we're dealing with objects in mechanical equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium means that the object is not accelerating, its net force is zero. So here's an example of a mechanical equilibrium problem. We have a hammock that is suspended from two trees that are eight meters apart. So this end is tied to a tree, this end is tied to a tree. It sags one meter down when a person lies in the hammock. I'd like you now to tell me the net force acting on that hammock. I hope you answered that the net force was zero, because the hammock is at rest. One prominent force in this hammock situation is the force of tension. Tension here is exerted by the two cables that are holding the hammock up from both sides. Tension is a force exerted by things like cables, strings, chains, and ropes. We model the direction of tension as always being in exactly the same direction as the cable itself, and always inward. So the cable is always pulling, you can't push a string. So here we're showing a person hanging from a cable. On the right, the cable is pulling the person up and to the right. On the left, the cable is pulling the person up and to the left. The ends of the cables are pulling inward on wherever their anchors are. In the case of the hammock, it was a tree. The cables would be pulling the hammock up and outward and the trees down and inward. Now let's look at these specific forces of tension and compare that to the other force that we know is acting on this hammock, which is the force of the weight of the person. I'd like you to just give a guess as to how the magnitudes of these forces compare. What do you think? It turns out that we do actually have enough information to tell this ratio exactly. So to start, I'll give a diagram of these forces that are acting on the hammock. There are three of them. There are the tension from the cable on the right, the tension from the cable on the left, and the weight of the person pushing down on the hammock. Here I've drawn these as arrows to represent that they are vectors. Recall that these forces add to zero because this is a mechanical equilibrium problem. The hammock is at rest, it is not accelerating. If the hammock is accelerating, say down, that means that one of the cables broke and the person in the hammock is going to be in for a very rude surprise very soon. Since these forces have to add to zero, we can show them as a vector addition diagram, where we add the vectors head to tail. We see that no matter where we start, if we add the other vectors to it, we have to end up exactly where we started. That's the only way that you can have a vector sum of zero. When this happens, you notice the magnitudes of the tension vectors are both greater than the magnitude of the weight. So for a shallow angle, the tension in the cable exceeds the weight of the person in the hammock, even though there's two cables and only one person. Now I'd like to get quantitative with this to say the exact ratios between tension and weight besides just eyeballing it and saying that the tension is greater than the weight. Here's how we can do that. We realize that the tension is in the same direction as the stretch of the rope. The stretch of the rope, we've said, is four units to the right or left, so four units horizontally and one unit vertically. So we can find the exact ratios of these by using similar triangles geometrically. Here we can specify the triangles in terms of the linear dimensions. Four meters horizontally and one meter vertically for each of those triangles. This adds up to two meters on the side. For our similar triangles with forces, the pink represent the tensions in the ropes and the green represents the weight of the person. So the ratio of that is two vertically to whatever this diagonal distance is. So the trick is to find the ratio between this magnitude of the pink arrow 
and this magnitude of the green arrow. So now let's draw these similar triangles that we need. One of the similar triangles that we'll use is this one, which represents the extent of one of the cables, which is showing that it's four meters to the right and one meter vertically. That's going to be similar to the force vector of the force exerted by that cable. Broken down into its vertical and horizontal components. So recall we've called this force F. So I'll demonstrate that here. This is the total magnitude of F. This is its component in the horizontal direction, F sub X. This is the component in the vertical direction, F sub Y. From the theorem of Pythagoras, we know that the square of the hypotenuse, which is F, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. There's a couple other things we know. We know that F of X, the X component, is four times the Y component. That we know from the similar triangles. And we also know that the Y component is half the weight. We can combine these facts. First of all, we'll use this first one. If the F of X is four times F of Y, then the square of that equals 16 times F of Y. So that's 17, sorry, that's squared. That's 17 times the squared. F itself is the square root of that. The square root of 17 times F of Y. Well, remember F of Y is W over two. The square root of 17 divided by two times the weight. The square root of 17 is a little bit more than four. Divide that by two, you get something that's bigger than two. Running it through a calculator real quick, I see that the square root of 17 is 4.123. When I divide that by 2, So indeed, the tension in each of the two cables is more than twice the weight of the person sitting in the hammock. This would be even more if the hammock were tighter, if it sagged less, and it would be less if the hammock sagged more. The smallest possible value for the tension would be half the weight, and that would be the case if the hammock is like a swing, the two cables are hanging straight down, they're not opposing each other horizontally. When we're addressing statics problems, there's some things that we should always keep in mind. The key thing is that all components of the vector sum have to be zero. All the forces have to add to zero in the horizontal direction. All the forces have to add to zero in the vertical direction. If there's three dimensions that we're worried about, they have to add to zero in all three dimensions. This is very powerful and very useful. In a static problem, generally you're trying to find the force or something about the force for a missing force. So you'll know some things, like you'll know something about the weight. You might know something about one of the tensions or some angles, and you're trying to find a magnitude, or perhaps you're trying to find an angle. But you can use what we know, that everything adds to zero, to find that missing piece, whatever that is. One more thing I need to mention about tension is how we deal with tension in pulleys. In this class, most of the time, we'll be dealing with a very simplified idea of pulleys, and the reason for that is to keep from complicating our problems too much, and we can understand qualitatively what we'd have to include to make things more realistic. And that is, we'll generally model pulleys as being massless and frictionless, and we'll also model ropes as being massless as well. Then we can say that the tension in a cable is the same on either side of a pulley. All the pulley does is redirect the tension. And this works no matter how many pulleys you have. And it works with whatever the angle is. So here if we have the cable making a right angle turn around the pulley, then the tension isn't the same, and it's still in the direction of the extent of the cable. Or in this case, you might have some object hanging from a pulley and you're pulling straight down. The tension in the cable on both sides of the pulley is pulling straight up on whatever the other object is. And both sides of this, of course, are pulling down on the pulley. 